Hi there, Turkle Storms with Century 21 Award and Temecula here. Today, I'm standing in a house. It happens frequently. I do work with real estate, but uh, you see what I mean. Um, I'm looking at a house here that is basically brand new. You will notice behind me that we have nice pictures, water on the island, a beautiful cabinets, and a beautiful, just everything is nice. Granite countertops, ready for drop install. Next to you, you can't see this, but there's a missing double oven and you're actually sitting in the spot that would occupy the microwave. So why is this? Well, I'm at a foreclosure. You might have figured that out too. A foreclosure, this happened because somebody couldn't figure out how to either pay the mortgage or they didn't want to or they didn't have the money for it. But we do have ways to avoid it. And that's what I want to tell you about. You know, don't foreclose just because you think that's the easy way out. If you foreclose, you're seven years into it before they'll let you buy something. It is seven years with a bad credit report. Let me tell you, seven years is a long, long time. So do yourself a favor, talk to a professional like a realtor, and preferably somebody who knows a little bit about short sales, because there are ways to help you get out of it. And there are ways to get these things sold. If you could sell out of a short sale and settle your debt, guess what? You're probably two years into something and then you may be able to go out and do something creative again. Okay? Now, different banks work different ways, but essentially here's what you need. A hardship, a loss of income, a loss of health, something that changes your financial picture to the point where you cannot make your payments. To prove this to the lender who is going to approve this short sale, which is really a short pay, but to prove it, we have to show them. So you need a financial statement. Something where you write down how much money you bring in, what you bring it out on, and what you give it to, and then exactly what you do with the money exactly. So we can see that when you have $10,000 left, there is no way you're going to be able to pay for this $15,000 mortgage. That's what we're looking at. Okay? So, a hardship, and typically you'll write that out as a hardship letter. A financial statement showing what you got going on. Your bank statement showing that you don't have any money. Let me just tell you, sending the bank a statement showing that you have $100,000 in your checking account is probably not going to help your case. Your pay stuff showing that you're not making the money. It is kind of important that you can show that you really do qualify for this. Okay? If you don't qualify, it's a lot harder.